Hey guys, Nathan here with a 2023 Toyota Prius. And words that you never expected to hear from anybody. That is a damn fine looking Prius. That's right, because it is. It's been all restyled and we're gonna talk about that a little bit, but the main point of this video is to talk about the fact that you gain a lot with the new Prius, but you do lose a few things or certain things have been taken away or reduced. So we're gonna talk about that in this video and I have Jeff here to help. That's right. All right, so let's get started. Now, first of all, pretty much all new car based on the TNGA platform. This is different in terms of almost every measurable way compared to the previous Prius. Let me start with the front end. The track is actually two inches wider. That is significant and that helps for handling. It is also, the car itself is actually an inch wider. The wheelbase is two inches longer, roughly. So longer, lower, by the way, a lot lower, and wider. And unusually, the ground clearance is just slightly higher than the previous Prius. Who would have thought? Now, there are a couple things to keep in mind. They're not going to produce a vehicle like this without adding some form of horsepower, right? I mean, this thing really does look like it could do 200 miles per hour, but it can't. Fortunately, it can really haul compared to the previous vehicle, and I'll show you why once I get this hood open. What's interesting is that for those people who are actually used to the Prius, when you look around a little bit, you actually see little bits and pieces here and there that are familiar. But looking at the engine, and take a good look at that engine because that is a two liter Atkins cycle four cylinder engine, uh, produces 194 horsepower and 139 pound feet of torque, way up from the past, which was 121 horsepower and 120 pound feet of torque. So this thing is way more powerful. And despite that, it, across the board guys, so city, highway, combined, 52 MPG. So pretty much no matter what you do, you're gonna get over 50 miles per gallon. So it is more powerful and more efficient than the previous Prius. I'm gonna screw that up by saying previous Prius too many times. It has an ECVT transmission going to just the front wheels. However, you can get an all-wheel drive version, and we're gonna talk about that. So let me close the hood without scrunching the nice camera person because I'm gonna show you the side of the vehicle over here. The reason why is because I wanted to point here. Ugh, what a voluptuous shape. I, they just knocked it out of the park. Okay, so back here, there used to be an electric motor that was an option for the all wheel drive previous Prius. And that electric motor it put out like no horsepower. It was like six horsepower, seven horsepower, whatever. Uh, that's gone. Thank goodness. Now the whole purpose of that electric motor was simply to provide just enough push to the rear wheels to get you out of a sticky situation. It didn't really enhance performance and it sure as hell didn't give you much on top of your already paltry horsepower rating. This is different. If you get the all wheel drive version, you get a 40 horsepower electric motor. That is significantly more, and it's a typical Toyota setup. So Toyota really pioneered this. What they did is in, God, almost everything that's front wheel drive bias, they have an option, if you get a hybrid, to have an electrified rear end. I mean, we're talking about minivans, pretty much all their passenger cars, regular passenger cars, all of them have an option to have something electrified in the back to power it and move it forward. And in the past, they weren't that impressive. And then recently they started adding more and more horsepower to the rear, more torque, which has made them a lot more fun to drive. All right, let's work our way over to the trunk, shall we? Or call it a hatch, call it a hatch. Now, first of all, look back here. We're gonna talk about design in just a second. Um, I wanted to point out something for those of you who really miss large 
American automobiles from the 70s and the 80s. Look, this is an LTD. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's limited. Um, Ford fans, if you Ford LTD. Okay, well, you can look it up on Google. All right. So let's look back here for a second because this is where things start to go sideways. You start to lose things in terms of interior cargo space. This is a lot less. This vehicle has 27 cubic feet back here. And if I put down both seats, 50.4 cubic feet of cargo space. That's not bad, but if you look at the previous Toyota Prius, it's less by a measurable amount. Not only that, there are a lot of other vehicles in this class that actually have more space as well. Why is that? Well, I have a feeling it has to do with the very slippery shape. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's exactly why. Still, if you move this very flimsy cover and put down the seats, you can put a bike in there. And I suspect you may not even have to take off the front wheel as long as the front passenger seat is all the way forward. So that's great. Now under here, ah, uh, yeah, you're not gonna see much down there other than this foam stuff. By the way, this, I know it looks like cheap styrofoam, but it's slightly stronger than that. So it, it's basically, I still think you could put ice in here and put a bunch of drinks in here, which would be really cool. But really the point of this is sound isolation and at the same time having some storage compartments underneath here. And yes, there is no spare tire. That in itself is kind of an issue, but we'll talk about the spare tire and we'll talk about uh, tires and wheels and all that other stuff in just a sec. That's not the fastest hatch on the planet, but it's also not the slowest. And it gets really slow right before it closes. Safety. Okay, let's now talk about what this vehicle is. Never mind the bear for a second. Let's look at this just from the side. Let's back up here. Yeah. Oh. Now, I, I did not get to go on the trip for this car. I really wanted to go because at first when I realized it was a Prius, I thought, no, this is a concept car. There's no way they're gonna build this. And the, one of the engineers for this vehicle, I read a whole bunch of interviews that he went through. His name is uh, Satoki, <coughs> sorry, got a bug in my throat. Uh, Satoki Oya. And he is the chief engineer for this vehicle. And he deserves a lot of credit for what this car became because they managed to convince the brass at Toyota that they could take a Prius and make it foxy as hell. And this is going to lead the styling into the future for many Toyota products. Mark my words, because the popularity of this car is already off the charts, not just with reviewers, but there's an awful lot of people out there who are sending questions in about this vehicle and about its design. And if you look at it, what do you see that, that reminds you of the previous Prius? I can show you right here. This is the only spot that kind of sort of, if you were to bring the windshield up a little bit, would remind you a little bit of the Prius, the former one. That's it. <laughs> Otherwise, everything else, I already told you, it's wider, it's longer, longer wheelbase. So there's nothing that visually really draws you to it and saying, hmm, that looks just like the old one nothing the front end design this knocks me out now for some reason tommy's not thrilled with the front end because of this it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers him but you know i know aesthetics can really get under people's nerves it, it doesn't bother me but the hood design this headlight design here i think that this is essentially the future of toyota right there not just with the regular cars, but also EVs. So love it or hate it, and I know that a lot of you love it. If you look at the design, if you can bring the camera right over here and just look right down this direction, I'm gonna show with my hand what they did here. So this bulges out here, it comes in over here, and then it bulges out a lot over here. You've heard of people talking about the hourglass or the Coke bottle design where it makes a car more sensual a little bit more well prettier right here this is exactly what they did okay so let's quickly go on the inside because i wanted to show you something that you lose
And I'm gonna do that again, not because I want to, but because you need to see it. So if you keep the camera right about here, you're gonna see my big butt get out. Here I come. Way down limbo. Yeah, that's right. In order to get into this car, if you are a large person or if you're very tall, you're gonna have to go down a lot because it is low to the ground. It's like sports car low to the ground. Let me fire up. Yeah, you're not gonna hear that, sorry, it's hybrid. But it is gonna make that noise because it's a Toyota and it thinks that you forgot that the doors are wide open. 12.3 um, inch screen here, very nice. Eight inch screen in front of you, which is great. The location of the two screens makes it a lot easier to drive this car. But for those of you who want a heads up display, you're out of luck. You don't need it because you have this eight inch screen. Also, you have all these components here, hard buttons, which I love. They're quite nice. And then this whole area here, you know what you lose? Proper USB cables, damn it. This is USB C's. I don't like those because I don't have any. So that's one thing you lose. Space in here is pretty good for the driver and the passenger once you lower your head to get in. But here we go. Let's go to the back seat. Now I want you to think of Jeff, our teddy bear, as a slightly portly young child. Now, I am six foot one. And normally in most cars, Jeff could fit in the back, but uh, yeah, he doesn't fit very well back here. Headroom isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Legroom is actually okay to a certain degree. For instance, if I'm sitting back here, or if Tommy was sitting back here, you can actually put your feet under the front passenger seat, which is great. But if you lean your head back, his ears nearly touch the top. But this torso, I mean, he's basically like a 10-year-old kid in terms of height, or, or a short 10-year-old kid, I should say. So a full-size adult in the back seat will rub their head. It's another thing you lose because in the previous Prius, you had a lot more backseat room. All right, let's take this thing for a ride. Now, by the way, uh, actually, before we go, you may be wondering, well, it's like a nice looking car. It's probably really expensive. You know, the base model for one of these things is uh, $27,450. That's not too bad. However, let's say you want to get a car similar to this in terms of gas mileage performance and you wanted it to be a Toyota, well, guess what, you're in luck, because the Toyota Corolla Hybrid is still on sale. And you can get one of those for, geez, 23.5. That base model, you're never gonna find one for that price, but a lot less than this. So, okay, what's wrong with getting one of those instead? Well, you lose a little bit of MPG. Those get, on average, about 50 MPG. It's also a lot slower. And it's also a Toyota Corolla. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Its backseat headroom is better. Its legroom, actually, I think this might be slightly better. And it has a trunk. You can't get the hatchback with a hybrid powertrain. So it's kind of, what do you want? You want a better looking car that has better performance and gets better mileage? You spend a little bit more money or you get a Corolla hybrid. Now, by the way, for those of you who are, you know, Uber, Lyft people. I wouldn't recommend this because of the back seat. I would say the Corolla is the way to go. The Corolla hybrid, much better choice. Okay, let's hop in and take a little drive. Now, the camera person's gonna hop in, so I'm gonna steal the camera because I wanna show you the screens. Yeah, that is an eight inch screen right there. I love that. Its location is really cool because if you see the way the steering wheel is set up and its height and this flat area here, most people can easily see over the steering wheel, even those with osteoporosis, like, you know, Roma would probably have to look underneath it like that. But the point is, is that this setup here, very logical. I'm a big fan of it. All right, let's 
fire up this puppy. All right, it's actually already fired up. <laughs> no engine noise. Sometimes you'll hear the engine kick in, but that's usually to recharge the battery. By the way, the battery is just under one kilowatt hour. Um, so it's, and it's lithium ion. Other Prius in the past used nickel metal hydride. Hydrate, well, you know what I mean. And this setup in this car, it works just fine. You can actually go a couple miles on all electric power, but you only can go a certain speed. So it's, I guess in a retirement community, if you didn't want your very quiet engine to actually be on, I suppose you could use it for that, but otherwise I just don't understand the purpose of it. But it doesn't matter because you could just leave the car alone, leave it in its regular mode, and it'll drive all day long in a efficient manner. In fact, the engine just kicked on just now and it's working like a generator as it should. So it's actually, as I'm coasting, putting power back into the battery. Now, right now it says I've been averaging 51.5 MPG. And the reason why it's that low is because we've done some zero to 60 runs with this thing and we've been driving it like a bunch of hooligans because, well, that's what we do for a living. Now let me close this window. Sorry, I totally forgot that you guys are trying to hear me. Um, couple things for those of you who didn't know because it's Toyota Prius it doesn't have a conventional transmission ECVT so this setup here in order to put it into gear you have to move this over and then you either go up or down now when you do that by the way when you touch it like I did it puts in a neutral immediately but that's going into drive and then to reverse go down and up park is pushing the button it's fairly easy to get used to. It's just not uh, what I would consider to be uh, fun. But you know what is fun? Check this out. Put my foot down. Dude, this thing kind of moves. Now remember, we're at high elevation here. And being up high usually saps a lot of the power from an internal combustion engine, even a turbocharged one. But because there is an electric motor that is hooked up to this, sandwiched in there, it does help it make up for some of that power loss. Handling is so much better than before. And that's partially because that wider track I was telling you about. And overall ride comfort has improved as well. As a matter of fact, every measurable aspect of this vehicle in terms of its performance is better. With one exception, if you're tall and you're trying to look out of the windshield, you're gonna be looking at this part of the uh, visor. Um, so keep that in mind. You have to sometimes lean your seat way back. And that may not work out for some of you in terms of comfort. For me, it works great. Uh, I think Roman fits in here pretty well too, even with his uh, new head of hair. But there are some people that I know in the profession who find this car to be a little uncomfortable for seating. I also wish that the driver and passenger front seats were a little bit wider for large Americans and there are an awful lot of us in terms of comfort. But I think that kind of encapsulates the whole thing. I really like what they did with this. I'm very proud of Toyota for knocking it out of the park and allowing this car to be built because it just looks like a concept car. It's so cool looking. Yeah, this one has the 19 inch wheels and it's the limit. It is basically top of the line. So we're talking about a vehicle that's creeping up to the $40,000 mark, but you can get one with identical performance for a lot less. By the way, that might be something that some of you don't like. You hear that in, that drone? That's what happens when you really hammer it. Yeah, but it goes away. That's the good news. So guys, what do you think? Is this something that you would like to drive? By the way, at 60 plus miles per hour, there is a lot of road noise. And I think that Jeff is kind of uncomfortable back there and he's gonna get nauseous if I keep driving this way, so I'm gonna take it a little easy. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I really do think Toyota did a great job. I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.